this idea that like taking a step back means I'm a failure or I'm bad. When actually, if we're talking about business ownership or just personal growth in general, I see it as a sign of intelligence. Welcome to the best hour of their day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. Mike and Sarah Jensen, Compound CrossFit. We're going to talk We're about- neighbors. We are neighbors. Well, how close are you guys? We're, We're affiliate co- neighbors. 20 minutes away. 20 minutes. Yeah. Do you see them very often? Uh, they come by. Yeah, we well, do. We, yeah, yeah. We come by. I send my coaches by. Coaches have been by several times. There's a lot of our, you know, we got Marty, Kara Silva. They're, they're like two hours, but they're like, they're literally down the street. Yeah. So. Had you guys know Fern before Best Hour? Mm-hmm. How'd you know? I did. You did both of my yep. level one and level and two. Level two. And then Same I did I your think. level two for sure. But that was after you had started. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, we, I mean, there's there's a lot of CrossFit affiliates in the Hampton Roads area. Uh, yep. I mean, in Virginia Beach, which is a sizable plot of land, uh, 25 gyms. Like, there's a lot there's of gyms lot of us. in our area. So, the well, community is pretty big. Let's talk about it. We got another married couple, affiliate owners. Yep kind of navigated affiliate ownership differently. Yep. Tell us about how you got started. Uh, well, it was a happy accident, actually. Um, I stayed at home with our son for two years, and then I was looking to go back to work. And the current owners at the time were like, I hear you don't want a job, or you need a new job. Do you want to buy a gym? And so- Got to buy a job. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And uh, we were like, oh, it'd be fun to own a gym. And so here we are. Yeah, I mean, context, like uh, third, Owners, we are the fourth owners. Fourth ownership. Fourth owners. Uh, currently, and then had to make the, de- the tough decision to downsize. Yes. Right, mm-hmm. and um, we went through all. We went through that, and they are currently in the new space. Um, and that's really, I don't think that is a decision that people consider frequently enough. I was like, I'm here, and I'm like, you could be much happier if you just went with less. Mm-hmm. So you know. let's let's unpack that. What were some of the reasons you started to? think about downsizing um one big reason was our lease was up uh rent was increased and we weren't completely happy with the space that we were in like it was a 5,000 square foot warehouse facility and compound had been there and only there but just because it was a 5,000 square foot warehouse facility doesn't mean it was a nice facility it was falling apart it was falling apart it would have needed also, it was also always too big if i was to be very candid yes. it was we only used about 2500 square how, feet maybe. how many members you have? uh at the moment we are at about 45 so so yeah, five we thousand is way yeah. more than you need. yes yes uh and we never used the front half of our gym we only used the back half of the gym the front half was Maybe like weird once. little office spaces, yeah. like oddly designed. And um, it was the upkeep wasn't good. It was not visible. The surrounding businesses around it, there was always trash in the parking lot. There was it would flood every any time it rained. It could have been an inch of rain, and there was a pool in the front. So inside, <laughs> no outside well, in the parking lot. Sometimes, yeah, yeah it would. Uh, water like would it. drip through the ceiling and through the walls and through the doors and, and the landlord was not doing anything not really no. and they wanted to double rent so, so we were we're not forced gonna take into care it. of this place we're going to charge you more yeah so and to be fair i mean real estate for that kind of space kind of demands that right if that flex warehouse space like people pay an arm and a leg nowadays so from it's there, flipped for sure and if you can still get a good deal then that's awesome but so this was it's not you worked it with them through this yeah 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 so i think we for you guys were in Nashville. Yes, mm-hmm. that was our... I believe that was like the initial, like, hey, this is uh, probably going to be a thing. We don't really know what we're going to do here. How do we start to navigate just this? Just earlier this year. Yes. Yeah, and January. In January, yeah. we went to Nashville with our question of, do we close or do we stay open? And what do we do if we stay open kind of thing? So, because um, it was really hard with, um, when we took over, we did change the culture of our gym and we did lose members. And um, so our, the gym, at the time was bigger and 
then things kind of shifted. And so we were like, oh, well, we can't really stay at this spot. Like it's not working for us. So do we stay open? Do we close? And so we had to kind of revisit our why, like why would we want to stay open? And um, we looked at our members and we're like, we want to stay open for them. And we asked our kids, like we had two kids, so nine and five. And um, we're like, what would happen if we didn't have a gym anymore? Hey, they're like, we so want the gym. You're going to make the business decision. Pretty much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, you're, uh, you're five now. Yes. And it's time you start running the that's business. A, that's an advanced module. In <laughs> yeah, pretty year. much. We checked with Fern first. Yeah. 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 No, but it was, we went to the mastermind in, in Nashville with like, let's ask other affiliate owners, like, this is, we're in it together. And a lot of people came up to us and was like, we were small and we went big and we wish we would have stayed small. So a lot of people made us feel better about possibly downsizing. Yeah, it's so, we're seeing people it's, kill it in a garage, you know, like. Yeah, I mean, we Adam, you saw Jimmy Nixon, thin air. yeah, thin, yeah. Adam, thin yeah. air, um, Jimmy. Jimmy, yep. Nixon, Jimmy in yeah. Atlanta is killing it. You know, well, um, I think the unfortunate belief is we're failing. Yes. Right? Is that what you guys were yes. like going through? Like, yeah, hey, if we go smaller, this is a step backwards. I mean, a little bit. Uh, I think we were forced into it. We just, we were only looking at spaces that were 5,000 square feet and above. Obviously, and then after those we, were the other conversations. Like, why? Well, yeah. yeah. And then we talked so to a bunch of people in. that yeah, are no, in 2,000 yeah, square feet. Yeah. And they were like, no, this works great. And here's how we do it. And here's our layout. And here's our class size. So, like, oh. And you're in 2,000 now? Uh, we're yeah. like, yep. And it's not like that's small. I mean, I started in 800 square feet, right? Yeah. So you're still in a decent, we have a lot of affiliates that are in 2,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. It this, just it, felt like a down, it just felt like a step backwards because you were Because so we big. were so big yeah. and we were in a completely different spot where, and it wasn't visible at all. And now we're in, um, like, we're in Greenbrier in Chesapeake and we get so much traffic. People just stop by and like, hey, I saw CrossFit up there. And they just kind of walk on in, which we never had that before. So, and like Fern had said at the beginning, like there's so many CrossFit gyms around us. We have to make sure that we stand out in some other different way and not try and be like everybody else. Well, hey, you got to stay in the game. Yes. Right. So like, in the, and this is an unfortunate reality of any business, which is like part of winning in business is just opening the doors tomorrow and then you repeat that and then you do it again and then eventually you've done it for 10 years but like sometimes it's just a the game of attrition right like and so she's like hey what's the best thing that i can do for myself to be in business tomorrow and then what's the best thing i can do for myself to be in business five years from now and i was i was talking to one of the talks earlier today one of the things that you know and this is kind of like you know, addressing what you guys are were dealing with at the time is this idea that like taking a step back means I'm a failure or I'm bad. When actually, if we're talking about business ownership or just personal growth in general, I see it as a sign of intelligence in order to, hey, like this is not working, but if I just try harder, it'll probably work. And I'm like, or we could just try something different. And your ability to like, hey, you know, how about I just change what I'm doing because it's clearly not working in this variation. Well, that word, exactly. I mean, Sarah's, what do you say about change? I mean, oh, everybody who walks through the doors. You always see, but I hate the quote. I hate the quote. Nobody likes change. I'm like, well, when you walk through the doors of a CrossFit affiliate, it doesn't matter whose it is. That's the one thing you seek is change. The only constant in life is change. Yeah, it's ever change. improvement. And right. so I hate that quote. So what was the difference in in rent when you went from 5,000 to 2,000? Well, it's twice as much per square foot to be in that nice heart of Greenbrier right off the interstate. It's still lower cost then. It's, no, it's, no. It, it, we, we did a it lateral, lateral move. It was a lateral, lateral move. move. Yeah. It was a lateral move. It was a lateral move. move with lateral financially, but like not lateral geographically. Yes. There's a there's more upside to where they moved to. Mm -hmm. Well, what's, what is the upside? Just foot traffic? Uh, foot traffic, it is a much like nicer, safer area um we the landlord is there's a, a landscaping crew on the grounds every week trash is picked up everybody around the facility is keeps up with their building as well so just the out like the exterior look makes it look so much nicer um more attraction and then just visibility a, point blank air conditioning and air yeah oh, we air, have conditioning, air conditioning like I mean, come on a ton. it sounds like <laughs> massive is it closer to home 
Uh, a few minutes. Yeah. So, so we I moved. Mean, there's a lot of yeah. perks. There is a lot of perks. It's right off the interstate, which is really good. Um, we are right down from like a One Life, so people will. We do have members oh, who yeah. go to One Life and one then life. they come over and take a class is that with like us. Like a Globo Gym in the area. Yeah. Like yeah, a yeah. It's a Golds. Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we and they'll just like I go to One Life, do my own thing, and I, they are literally still sweating walking in our door to take a CrossFit class. And you know we've only been there for a few months. I was gonna but say I mean, like just think about May, it. January. May yeah, well, not almost three. Yeah. 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 But January is gonna come, and everybody's gonna get a One Life membership. And then February is going to come, and they're going to get a CrossFit. They're going to they're gonna drive by and go like, "Man, I haven't gotten any results, or I'm not going, or I need help." And we we spoke about that yesterday, where it's like, "Cool, if if there's an issue every year at the same time, and you're not doing anything about it, but this is an opportunity to be proactive, knowing there, we're going to see resolutions. Let's have something going on in February. Yes, when they're falling off and they're driving past, like outdoor. It's Virginia. It might not be warm enough to work out, but we do some outdoor workouts. We can sure. get our signage going. We can do a lot of things to capitalize on that. Oh, yeah. Hey, cool down. Go walk around the building. I need okay. people to go see some fit ass people. Go walk over to one people line just... hand out these flyers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we can run burpees. as much as possible just to, so they can. We're do yeah, burpees really outside their door. <laughs> but right. 45 members, obviously now the next step is we need some growth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you guys, what are some of the things you've done at the new space already to improve that? Uh, that was a big thing when we moved, that was a change. And so we decided to do a bigger change with that as well. Um, we switched to a four week billing, we switched to agreements, um, and we did a price increase all at the same time. So, so that's not necessarily uh, growth no, from a membership help. standpoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. But, and you know, we, we did go through a little bit of the, I won't say controversy, but it was, well, hey, if, if rent is the same, like what like what are we why, why are there, is there yeah. a price increase like well we're making huge strides from a coaching perspective the delivery of classes in this smaller facility is so much better uh, you know with 25 foot ceilings and this echoey well rent's the same but the amenities cost more right meaning like hey the upkeep here For i've sure. got ac now that's yeah. got to be paid right like heat like all those things but like that's a mistake both affiliate owners and the members out. make yes. where it's like right build out costs like oh man things. just it's signage that, with the price increase as well, we really invested in our coaching staff. Mm -hmm. um, previously, our coaching staff, they, you know, coached five classes that covered their membership Barter and then they system. got paid and we took out, we took that out. Um, now level ones get paid one price, level twos get paid another price. If, if and when we get level threes, they'll get paid another. If and when we get level fours, they'll get paid another and they get paid for their first class and their last class. And so we wanted to professionalize the coaching staff as well. And, um, that came with the price increase. We're like, we're going to invest in our coaches because our coaches are our product. Um, and we also were able to pay for two coaches level ones to come on our staff. And that's something that we don't know has ever been done, but that's something that we are very proud of to be able to supply. Affiliate owners, if you want to grow revenue, what you need to understand is impact first offering the best classes and changing people's lives is how you get the revenue that you are searching for inside of the affiliate. And that starts with running fantastic classes here inside of the box. If that, if that is something that you are looking for, we've got world-class coaches that are going to help you do that and help you run a better box. Everything from the coaching on the floor to the systems on the back end, we're going to cover it all. Book a call. We'll see you guys on the inside. You did the trifecta, right? You did a rate increase, four week billing, and agreements simultaneously, yes. which I believe is the way to go. But how was it received? Um, we, with that, it was received kind of like 50 50. Like people had some concerns, and I sat and talked about some people. We also had people that came up to us right off the bat and was like, 52 weeks. I was like, you don't even know the prices yet. And they're like, it's okay. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So we had some that had concerns. We did, um, and those people that had concerns, I leaned on Joel and I said, how can I do this? And so he's like, lead with passion. They're probably very scared because it is something that is changing and like, give them a month, let them have a month and see how it goes. And after that month, they signed up for a 52 week agreement. So yeah. And, and also it, it helped the culture, it did. right? Like, you know, the people that that was one of the bigger about issues that you have had it was an underlying tone yes. of the transition and you know we've got this new location and it's like hey we're changing ships we're setting sail 
and um, you know the people that were with us were all on board so even the folks that you know had to think about it or decided to you know do their fitness somewhere else you know it was, it was great it still moved us forward either it's, way it's not unusual and sometimes if you want to change the environment you have to change the environment you know like Lindsay London went through that like any number of boxes that like hey I purchased the thing there was an underlying tone there you, you have to change the environment because otherwise people still see it as the old thing meaning like visually they still it's just the same it's the same stuff and i'm like mm -hmm. yeah but many things have changed but like if you walk in and things are different now they're fundamentally different like it gives me this weird ability to start making the course corrections that i need to that are going to be compounding in nature um for the future so i think you know like because i think you guys had just, that had started the previous mastermind because that was more the question in denver yes yeah, we were. That, Denver had a lot of um, staff, right? Coaching, training, right, and right, coaching yeah. issues. It's like, hey, we were we were trying to shift all of that because, like, hey, this is we're new ownership. How do we get people on board? Um, you know, so and this helped with that too because basically the way we handled um, our our coach agreements because we had them sign agreements when we moved to the no lo new location, and uh, we basically said, hey, there's no more barter system. You're not a member and a coach. You can join any class. Right. You know, we'd love to have you in class. You're going to get coached just like another member, but you don't have a membership. You get paid for your first class and your last class. And so when you're in the building, you're on staff. And so the culture of the coaches stepped up a notch, too, because they had this expectation that when I'm in that building, I'm a coach. And there wasn't, you know, they, they, they know what that entails. That entails, you know, greeting people immediately at the door and, and you know, helping the coach that's on the floor if they're, you know, classes get larger somebody will step up and a lot of that you know with this change what has it done to you guys on a on a personal level how has it impacted your ability to run the gym how has it impacted anything outside the gym with the change we we had to buck up buttercup like it was one of those things where it was we had to we had to become the leader we had to become the leader. We had to be the ones to make decisions. We couldn't just sit there and be like, well, what if, what if, what if? We're like, no, we have to. People are relying on us and to lead the ship. So we had to really kind of dig deep and find ourselves. And if anything, like it was really hard. But I love myself for who I am now because of what we went through. So it it helped me personally come through I, I was a big people pleaser i am a very big people pleaser we're recovering and, yeah, we're recovering, recovering people, pleasers. people pleasers. yeah so and now we're like mm, no we can, it's okay to say no and and set that boundary and do what's best for us and the gym at the same time instead of just doing what's best for the people or doing what's just best for the gym even though it was something that would weigh heavily on us or require a lot more of our energy. I mean, like, people are always excited and come up to us like, we should do this, we should do this. Like, no, we should not do that. It's okay, no, we're gonna hold off on that. Or that is not something we should discuss in front of members, <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's something else, you know, with the coaches professionalizing that was, hey guys, we, we have, have that conversation too. Like, hey, yeah, let's just, uh, let's step that. in the office yeah. and shout about that. Yeah. That's not yeah. something to bring up at the whiteboard. Um, but yeah, like there's real ownership now. Um, I've been a member of the gym for 11 years and coaching for 10 and that building was there from the first owner who like I don't know that guy you know what I mean so we kind of inherited this location we inherited this warehouse and then we moved to this new location and when we made the announcement um, kind of with heavy hearts to some extent like hey we're gonna be moving and this is what's going on immediately people stepped up how can i help what can i do um my buddy justin helped me build it so i essentially got to build sarah her gym you know and and justin he, is the husband of one of our members got it so he, he built said, the gym for his wife so yeah, he's not even a member he is now he has we told him we're like since you helped out there you go. like yeah you this you're a and member for life like here so weeks of just meeting at 3 30 after work and work until 10 or 11 and just again and again and again until it's ready and, and my in buddy in due time if probably not today we'd have no problem paying for membership mm -hmm. just to contribute and help sure to support yeah. you guys yeah yeah my, my my buddy oso he's a metal worker and so the rig didn't fit in the new location he's like 
I got you, man. Like, let's. So we cut the rig down. Yeah. Like, we built this thing ourselves. It's really cool to show up to a spot at 5 a.m. that you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did that, and I did that, and I did that. Like, and with the new location, because um, when we were talking about actually like buying, like once it got really serious, and one of the previous owners, um, he had was like, I'm gonna give you kind of like the good and the bad, and the bad is it comes with baggage. Um, every gym that, that has a, a previous owner comes with baggage, and that's just something you have to you be have aware of. Three sets of baggage. Three sets of baggages, it's correct. A lot of baggage. So of it bags. was it was a lot of baggage that came along with it, and so when we made that decision to move, since it had never moved, um, some people did not receive it well, and some people were like, "Cool, let's go," and some people walk over and they're like, "This spot's way better," and some people kind of miss it. It revealed spot, some like real fans. They're right. like, "Oh man, I got people that are like there." Right. Yeah. That's cool. Well, and a lot of them get to feel like they're part of yes. a new space. Yeah. And now it's their new home. And, and they that's... probably, like you, didn't feel any attachment. Mm -hmm. to, they had an attachment to you two. Yes. And now they feel... Some of those people subtly are probably like, this was hey, a... I like these people. Yeah. This place is a dump. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Like, I like doing crossing over. When we were Seriously. packing up and moving, we and, like, the walls were cleared and stuff was down, people looked around and they're like... I didn't realize it looked like this <laughs> until everything, like the dust, like cleared. So yeah, it's um. So you're two my two and a half months, right? Ish. May one yeah. was when we yeah, first yeah. started at the new okay. location. Yeah. And then, so since you've been there, what's changed? Um, coaching has changed. Our hours have not changed, which was one thing we were going to change from the Vegas Mastermind, but things picked up from that, so we could not change. Good our news, hours. bad news. Good news, bad yeah. news. Um. But just the visibility, the overall feel that's in the gym, the the vibe, the energy, it's lighter, it's happier, it's more welcoming. We, Mike and I love going there now because it's ours. Like, this okay. is ours. So let's stay there for a second. What was the previous feeling? Um, at, at the beginning, when we first started owning, it was like, like this is our... Like, actually, I take that back. Um, it was a little bit of imposter syndrome. I did not... I felt bad saying that I was an affiliate owner. I felt bad saying that we owned a gym at the very beginning. And then I got rid of that. Um, and we were proud you of it. You legitimately felt bad. I felt bad saying that you I felt owned bad a gym. Or you, didn't, you felt fake. I f both. Yeah. Both. It felt. It'd like, be like buying a car and going, like, hey, I built this car. But now we right. can say, like, I built that shit. Yeah. Like, with my hands and every day that we work on stuff and we get done with a sprint and we check that next box. Like we're building, we're putting the next brick this on that. This is the builder versus owner analogy. Yeah. yeah. So it was, we took over something that was already there. We did what was always done. And so it wasn't necessarily ours when we took over. Um, and being the people pleaser, we did the thing that we should not have done, which was ask for other people's opinions. And so <laughs> we learned that lesson very quickly. What do you think we should do? I think you should hall. never change my rate. Yeah. Town, oh, town hall. Yeah, okay. yeah. We, 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 we tell us what we should do. So you mean yoga? You know, yoga. <laughs> <laughs> and our rate should go down. Um, so that was um, something. So now that we're in the new spot, we're like, this is our, like, this is our baby. This is our other kid. So. That's cool. I think another big change was just the camaraderie between members. So yeah. um, rather than this huge space where you've got 10 or 12 right. pull up uh, or, or, you know, squat racks and everybody's spread out. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, hey, we've got five Dude. and you guys are going to share bars. And it's energy. awesome. Yeah, yeah it's it does. Awesome. People are afraid to make people partner up to like squat. I'm like, they're going to perform better. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's like my nightmare. I remember I used to have this recurring nightmare. And then one of the talks that I gave today was just about risk assessment and how to do that. And when I had opened like a boutique place in 2017, that nightmare came true, which is like standing in an empty gym is the most anxiety I think you could possibly ever feel as a gym owner. You're like, oh, fuck. What is happening? In here? Yeah, it's the worst. It's yeah. the worst, and that's why when people are like, "Oh, we want to keep the classes small," I'm like, "That's me compensating for that fear." It's just like thirty-five people get them in the door. Yeah. Let's go. You know, I'm just like absolutely not. Like it's like I mean, in the early days, man, I'm used to remember show up like if I like I didn't mind showing up to six a.m. if I knew it was gonna be jamming. Right. Sure, but if I'm like if it's two people. I'm having a hard time bringing that energy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm like, oh, God. Like, why? Like, what's happening? 
Uh, and your members feel that. No, this is my point, right? And this is this is the value of understanding like good culture, driving the vibe, making it high energy, because high energy is just as contagious as low energy. And if the energy in the box starts to pull down, there it is absolutely like as much as the sun's gonna come up tomorrow, like membership will start to drop. Because people don't like that energy, dude. Like and it that's, sucks. That's kind of what happened to us at the at the previous location. Was we changed the the gym was more of like a competitive side, and we wanted our 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 gym to be something that was all inclusive. We wanted elderly. We wanted kids. We want we want everybody and anybody in that gym. Um, people that have never done CrossFit before. People that have done CrossFit for fifteen years. We wanted anyone in that gym. So changing that was a big thing because some people wanted that competitiveness and that was okay. So they left and found the competitiveness, but that did drive our membership down. Um, so when that did happen, being in that very large space with few people and they, everybody, it was like they had cooties and they spread out. Like it was, it was hard to coach. And, and for reference, uh, not only 20 minutes away from Rife, but we're 20 minutes away from Krypton. So, like, why, from a business perspective, does right. it make any sense to try and go the performance route? It's like, no, no, no. Ben's if you want to go to the games, right. yeah. I'll send you to a spot. Tell them yeah, we sent cool you. There. Send yeah. your mom and dad. We'll take care of them. Yeah. yeah. Push Press is the easiest full suite software that you can get to run your business. One of the best things about Push Press, I would say, is the customer service. Hands down, they are the best. We know them all by name. They hear a lot from us, you know, and they know us, <laughs> but they're there to help you. And they're also gym owners, so they understand. They are out of this world in helping their clients and just have a true passion for helping gym owners. They're so good with customer service. If you're not using it and your business is ready for it, or you're having stress with the system you're using, it's a no-brainer to give them a call. Before we found Push Press, um, managing different things was very complicated and confusing, and so we just needed something that was more user-friendly. If I had to describe Push Press, it would be comprehensive because they really understand what a gym owner needs and they give us all the tools that we need to be successful. In fact, I don't think I've ever talked to somebody from Push Press that didn't own a gym. So they understood and I immediately connected with the people there and the products that they gave me were just, this is everything I needed. Like, where have you guys been my whole life? The best way that I can describe Push Press is absolutely phenomenal. If I had a gym owner friend that didn't have push press, I would tell them that it's life changing when it comes to having more time to work on the business and the support is coming from other gym owners that are trying to do the same thing that I'm trying to do. Well, what's next? Uh, ooh, that's a great question. Um, actually, what's next is um, one of my dreams of after like we have the new location stuff like that is to get different people in the gym. And so we are having the Special Olympics powerlifting. Um, we're gonna do that in at Compound CrossFit. So yeah, which for is Chesapeake. For Chesapeake. Very cool. That's cool. Um, yeah. So we're gonna start there and like let that kind of be a basis, and hopefully that can help spread the word and get it out there and and know that it's CrossFit's for everybody. And, so. and right now you're on the three for three for Masterminds. You're going to be in Orlando? That's the plan. Yeah, That's absolutely. Just, um, once Last we get weekend, to number 24, 25, think, yeah. there's going to be some special stuff for those that have made it. <laughs> there are. Yeah. Awesome. I've got that. I don't, I, know, like, I don't know what it is, but... I've got yeah. that covered. <laughs> but, I mean, there's only four, but only a handful of people. Mm. I mean, the Boucher's, one of them, have been to all three thus far. Mm -hmm. So keep that up it sounds like it's important to you it is it is very important to us because very helpful um it's that ever-growing mindset that's one of our values is to constantly be able to learn and adapt and grow and business has changed so much over the years so the only thing that we can do is kind of come together as a group that is something that you guys have done and we are so thankful for is bringing affiliates together to to be a team together and not be enemies and know like that CrossFit gyms don't have to compete against each other. There are way too many people in the world to be competitive against each other, that we can rely on each other and that we can help each other out. And that's one, because of that, we were able to make the decision to downsize because we had the support of so many people that may have met us just that time in Nashville and 
they came up and talked to us and shared their story and gave us the support and gave us their numbers and said like, Hey, call and text me. Like if you have a question about doing this and this and this. So it yeah, was, it's, um, CrossFit comp or CrossFit affiliates are not in competition, but I do think they owe it to each other to push each other to be better. Yes. And that sometimes can be misinterpreted, mm -hmm. which is like, Hey, that gym over there. And I'm like, maybe they just want you to be better. Maybe they've just like raised the bar a little bit. And if you're uncomfortable, that's fine. But like, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't chase them. Like, um, be better. The, yeah, just be better. And I think the other thing in there is that, and I referenced it earlier today in one of those talks, is like, I think, I believe that there are multiple variations of better. Yes. Right? Sometimes better is more. And then sometimes better is easier or smaller. But better is not always bigger or more right sometimes better is like hey do the exact same thing but do it on less rpms sometimes like hey you need to downsize that and then reimagine it and do a better version in a different variation that's better and then from there you have now built a more solid platform to then grow on and i think what i've been super proud of you guys is you've kind of embraced that like hey let's let's go ahead and like kind of detach from this whole 10-year thing that's that we've we're kind of stuck under this funk of and like, let's kind of start anew. And we're kind of like, we'll downsize in order to do that. And then in order to grow off of there. And uh, if, I'm, if I'm a betting man, which I am, uh, it's gonna pay out. It's gonna pay out for you guys long-term. Yes. And, and sometimes it's like, listen, I was telling my story in there from 2017. It's just like, it's not always smooth. It's not always painful. A lot of times it could be a rocky road, but that doesn't mean that there's no tomorrow, right? Again, it's just like, again, What's the goal of business? Open the doors again tomorrow. Like, give yourself a shot to keep going. So, you guys have done that, and uh, you've done it in a, u a unique way. So, kudos to you guys. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks yeah, we're really for pumped the help. to keep working with you. We're excited to see you in Orlando. Hell yeah. 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 And uh, we're, we're glad we made it happen. Yes, we are very excited you guys made it happen too. <laughs> we wouldn't be here if it wasn't. So Awesome. Well, thank you. keep going. I'll see you guys back on the beach. Yes, you will. Thank right. you guys for coming. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Cool. I'll see man. you guys next time. Thanks for checking out this episode of the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you in your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.